Hello, in this video I will show you how you can define the folders and file names of your render set outputs. So let's begin by going to the render set preferences and here we can see that we have a render output settings section. Now some of you might actually see a little warning here saying that you should first save your blend file and this happens when you have a completely new blend file that hasn't been saved yet. So please do that and then you can continue. Now you can see that we have output folder path here and also we have output file names here. So for the output folder path, I have prepared a very simple absolute path like this. And for the output file names, you can actually see that we have three types of file names and there is a output file names for each of the types that render set supports. Uh, now we will be using just a still image file name and we already have a name called image here and we can leave that. So now when we render, uh, we should see an output called image in this folder path that we define. So let's try it out. So let's close the preferences and hit render. Now after the render finishes, we can open the output folder and you can, as you can see, it's really the folder that we defined and here we have the output called image and with, if we open it, we can actually see it's our default cube. Now we can get back into the render set preferences and before we continue, I would like to mention that these render output settings are actually definable per scene, which means that if you create a new scene and define completely different output uh, settings, when you get back to your previous scene, you can still use the, the output settings that you defined there. And this also applies to the blend files. So if you open a new blend file, and create completely different output settings. When you get back to your previous blend file, you will still have those old output settings. Now let's get a bit more advanced. So aside from using your own folder path, you can also choose from one of our three presets. And for example, if I choose this one, you can see that there are some parts of the folder path that are actually in curly brackets. And this is something we call variables, which are very useful because they serve you as sort of a template uh, that will get replaced by values that are different or can be different for each context. Uh, so for example, the context name variable here actually gets replaced for the name of the context it is used in. So here we have an example and you can see here it was replaced by an example context name. Uh, but I want to show you uh, in real renders how it actually works. So first let's use the same absolute path that we used before. Uh, but now we want to add a variable called context name. Here you can see all the variables that you can use. Uh, and also when you click this little looking glass, you can see them more because these also have some example values. Uh, so you can see what you can use. Uh, so now we see that we have this folder path with the context name at the end. So for each context we render, we should get an output called image uh, inside this folder path that ends uh, with a folder that's different for each of the context and it's named after the context name. So now we can here add two new contexts. So we have three contexts, each with a different name. And now when we hit render all and wait, after the render finishes, we can actually open the output folder and you can see that for the context one we have an image. And if we go one folder back, we can see we actually have three different folders uh, and each of them has an image.png output inside them. Uh, so here you can see how you can use your variables. Of course, this was very simple, but you can use all the different variables for your advantage. You can actually use these variables in the file names as well. So let's do another render for demonstration. 
we can keep the three contexts we have here, but in the renders preferences, we will choose the output of it. So let's get the context name out of here, but let's, uh, let's add, for example, a date time variable. So here we have date time. Uh, so let's add it here. And in the image file name, uh, let's actually add the context again as we used to have it. So this way uh, we actually get uh, the folder called like it before, but instead of the context, we will have this date time and it, it will actually be just one date time and each context will render into it as well. Uh, but inside we will have three different images that each ends with the name of the context that created it. So let's see how it goes. So let's hit render all. And now that the render finished, we can open the output folder. And as you can see, we are in the outputs. We have a folder with the date time of the time when we hit the render button. And inside this folder, we actually have three different images uh, that each ends with the name of the context that created it. Uh, so I hope from this you get how powerful the variables can really be. I would like to show you one last thing before we end this video. And that is that you don't have to be afraid of using variables. Uh, for example, you can uh, it can happen that you have a wrongly typed variable or you leave an accidental curly bracket at some place and or for this animation frame it always needs to have a frame current variable inside and you forget about it uh, you get all these errors uh, but you can always right click the text box and reset it to the default value uh, which will not throw an error at you so don't be afraid to use variables and that's it. So I hope that you learned something and that you will use all the things you learned in your rendering.